Hello, today we are going to solve some practice problem on MathSat, that is Scholastic Aptitude Test. Question 1 says, number A is increased by the product of B and C. What does that mean? It means that A is increased by the product of B and C. The result, which is this, is divided by C. The result is divided by C and then decreased by B. Decreased by B means minus B. Finally, that result is multiplied by C. This whole result is multiplied by C. Which of the following is the final result? So if we open the bracket, if this multiply this, C will cancel this C. We are left with A plus BC. And this multiply this, we have minus BC. And BC minus BC is 0, so we are left with A. So the correct option is A. Question 2 says, Y over S is 0 0.5, 2 bracket X minus 3 is Y. The so we should find the value of XY and then evaluate S plus Y. So this is just a simple simultaneous equation. So from 1, we have that Y is 0 0.5 multiplied to by X, X. I know 0 0.5 is sent in as 1 over 2, so which is 1 over 2x. And so if I make S the solid of formula, I will have that X is 2y. And from this equation, if I open the bracket, I'll have 2x minus 6 equals y. And now X is 2y. If I substitute, I will have 2, 2y. Minus 6 equals y. And if I open, I have 4y minus 6 equals y. 4y minus y is 3y. And if we take 6 to the right hand side, we'll have 6. Divide both sides by 2. I'll have that y is 2. And so since y is 2, x will be 2 times 2, which is 4. Therefore, x plus y will be 2 plus 4, which is 6. So, that is C. Number 3 says, in the figure, line AB equals BC, which is what we are seeing here. What is the value of X? Since line AB equals line BC, it means the angles A and C, which is angle BAC and angle BCA have to be equal. So, angle B, A, C equals angle B, C, A. Let's call it A. The reason is base angle of isosceles triangle. So, write isosceles. So, if here is A and here is A, we know that A plus A equals 1 O C because the exterior angle of any triangle equals the sum of the two opposite interior angle. So, I know that A plus A equals 106 degree because the exterior angle of a triangle equals sum of the two opposite interior angle. So, that I have 2A equals 106. I can divide both sides by 2 that A will be 53. Since A is 53, we are looking for X. If A is 53, from angle on a straight line, I know that A plus X, which is 53 plus S, equals 180. From angle on a straight line, and if I subtract 53 from both sides, it implies that x is 180 minus 53 and 180 minus 53 will be equal to 127 so which is d question 4 says which of the following is equivalent to this so which of this following is equivalent to this so let's open this bracket we'll have s square y minus 2 x y square plus 3 x y Open the bracket, we'll have minus 2xy 
plus 2xy squared because minus minus is plus and minus 2x squared y. What can cancel? Minus 2xy squared plus 2xy squared can cancel is 0. x squared y minus 2x squared y is minus x squared y. And 3xy minus 2xy is plus xy, which is b. If you are yet to subscribe, kindly hit the subscription button, share this video, like it, comment. Question 5 says, Jenny had M magazines to sell for her soccer team fundraiser. She sold J magazines on her own and her sister sold nine less than twice the amount Jenny sold. How many magazines remain unsold in terms of M and J? Let's go. So Jenny sold J magazines. So Jenny sold J magazines. Her sister sold. So her sister sold nine less than twice the amount Jenny sold. So twice what Jenny sold is 2J. Her sister sold nine less than. So nine less than twice the amount Jenny sold would be nine less than twice the amount Jenny sold. Nine less than twice the amount Jenny sold. So how many magazines remain unsold in terms of M and J? So at the end of the day, the total magazine sold will be J plus 2J minus 9, which is 3J minus 9. So at the end of the day, the number of magazines that remain unsold, since they had M magazines to sell, so remaining magazine will be m minus 3j minus 9 which is m minus 3j plus 9 because minus times minus is plus which is d if arrow and s are two solutions of the equation below which of the following is the value of arrow plus s we know that if this is a quadratic equation and arrow and x are the root of this equation we know that arrow plus x is given as minus b over a and arrow s is c over a so if we want to get the sum of the root we take minus b over a. What is a, b, and c? a, b, and c are the coefficient of the quadratic equation. So in this case, a is 3, b is 10, and c is minus 8. So to get arrow plus s, arrow plus s will be minus b is 10, and a is 3, which is a. The graph of f of s is shown below for x greater than or equal to minus 5 and s less than or equal to 5. How many reroutes or resolutions does f of s equals to have? The solution of f of s equals to is the point where the y the point where this two line, this equation, that is this graph and this graph intersect. That will be the solution. The number of free solution f of s equals to have is 
those points where this graph and this graph intersect, which are these one, two, three. Therefore, it has three three solutions. Which is this. The price of a backpack is B dollars, to which T percent of sales tax is added. To which T percent of sales tax is added at the counter. What is the price of the backpack after tax in terms of B and T? So the price of backpack is B dollars. The tax is T percent of the sales. Tax is T percent is T over 100 times the price, which is 0 0.01 TB. So at the end of the day, the price after tax will be B plus 0 0.01 TB. And if we factorize B, we'll have B bracket 1 plus 0 0.01 T, which is A. For question 9, we are told that if 2x minus 3 multiply x minus b and the result is 2x squared minus qx plus 12, for all values of x, what is the value of p plus q? Now, what we'll do is to multiply this and equate it to this, and then we'll find the corresponding value of q and p. So if we multiply this, we'll have 2x minus 3, x minus p. 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times minus p is minus 2xp, minus 3 times x is minus 3x, minus 3 times minus p is plus 3p. So this is a quadratic equation in which this is the square term, which is 2x squared. This is x to power 1 to factorize the coefficient will have 2p plus 3x plus 3p. So for this to be equal to this, it means their corresponding coefficient has to be equal. So it implies that since we have minus here, we have minus here. 2p plus 3 have to be equal to q and 3p have to be equal to 12. And if 3p is equal to 12, we can find we can find p by dividing by 3 so that p is 4. And if we substitute 4 for p in equation 1, we we'll have 8 plus 3 equals q. 8 plus 3, therefore, p is 4, q is... We are asked to sum it, plus 4 is... Question 10 says, if a equals 5 and b equals 3, what is this equal to? So we can open the brackets and we'll have ac minus 6, plus this is ab, this is minus ac. ac can cancel minus AC. So we're left with AB minus 6 and reverse it. So since A is 5 and B is 3, this is 5 times 3 minus 6. 5 times 3 is 15 minus 6 and this is 9. Question 11 says, if X and Y are positive integers, what is the value of this? If we open this bracket, we will have 3x to the power 4, 2 square is times 4, and y square 
over, we'll open this bracket to we'll have 4 s squared 2 times 2 from the laws of indices. When we have powers like this, we'll multiply the powers. 2 times 2 is 4, so x to the power 4. And this is y squared. So that y squared cancel y squared since we are guaranteed that x and y are positive integers. s to the power 4 cancel s to the power 4. 4 cancel 4. So we are left with 3 as the answer. 12 says, for what value of n is n minus absolute value of n minus 7 equal to 0? So for n minus absolute value of n minus 7 equal to 0, which means, which implies that n equals absolute value of n minus 7. For this to be equal to absolute value of n minus 7, Remember the definition of absolute value. From the definition of absolute value, we know that absolute value of x equals s if x is greater than 0 equals minus x if x is less than 0. So, we we'll have two cases here. So, if n minus 7 is positive, it means n equals n minus 7, which will give a positive number because s is greater than 0. In this case, we are considering the case where n minus 7 is positive. And the second case is when n minus 7 is negative. And if you take the absolute value of a negative number, you have minus x or x less than 0. So that if this multiply this, you will have a positive number at the end. So the second case is n will be equal to minus n minus 7. So n minus n is 0 equals to minus 7. It means there is no solution here. Now, if we consider this case, this is n equals minus n plus 7. We we'll add n to both sides. We we'll have 2n equals to 7. Divide both sides by 2. So n is 7 over 2. So it is where n is 7 over 2 that we will have this expression equal to 0. 13 says if s plus 3 is a factor of f of x, which is this, in which a and b are constant what is the value of 3a minus b we know that if x plus 3 is a factor of this x equals minus 3 is a root of this same quadratic equation and because it's a root if we substitute minus 3 for x we should have 0 as a root it is. So let's do that. We'll have f of minus 3 should give me 0, which is a minus 3 square plus b minus 3 minus 15. This should give me 0 because s equals minus 3 is a root. And minus 3 square is 9a. This is minus 3b. We we'll take this to the right hand side. This is 15. I can factorize 3 out or I can divide through by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Here I'm left with 3a minus b equals 5. So we're asked to look for 3a minus b. 3a minus b is 5. What we're looking for. Question 14 says if t is positive and t squared minus 4 is 0, what is the value of t? So from this we see that it is a perfect square. And so we use, sorry, from this, we see that this is a difference of 2 square. So this is the same as t square minus 2 square. From difference of 2 square, we have t plus 2, t minus 2 equals 0. And if we equate each of them to 0, we know that t plus 2 have to be equal to 0 or t minus 2 have to be equal to 0. So t is equal to minus 2 or 2. But since t is greater than 0, we have that t is equal to 2. Meanwhile, don't forget to like this video, share it to your friends, comment, also subscribe. Thank you. Question 15 says, we should solve the simultaneous equation. We should find the value of s. If we use elimination method, we can easily eliminate s, but we are looking for x. To save time, we use substitution method 
will make y the subject of formula in equation 1, substitute it in equation 2, and then find x. So that will be, so from 1, we know that y will be minus 9 minus x. If we put it inside equation 2, we'll have x plus 2 minus 9 minus x equals minus 25. So x plus, this is minus 18. And this is minus 2x equals minus 25. x minus 2x is minus x. We take minus 18 here because plus 18. So minus 25 plus 18 minus x will be minus 7 and minus can cancel minus so that x is 7. 16 says in the right triangle, one angle measures s degree where sine x degree is 4 or 5. What is cos 90 degree minus s degree? What we we'll use here is the relationship, the complementary relationship between sine and cosine in a right angle. So we know that sine and cosine are complementary angles. Sine and cosine are complementary angles. That is, in a right angle, if here is theta, of course, here will be 90 minus theta. The sine of this angle equals the cos of this angle. That is why sine 45 equals cos 45, sine 60 equals cos 30, so they sum up to 90. So, in this case, sine s degree will equal cos 90 degree minus x because they are complementary angles and since sine s degree is this which will now be 4 over 5 so cos 90 degree minus s is 4 over 5 that's all is a complementary angle nature of sine and cosine that is what we used to get this if a is 5 root 2 and 2a is root 2x what is the value of x? So we'll substitute a here. We'll have 2 times 5 root 2 equals to root 2x. So if we open bracket, we'll have 10 root 2 equals to root 2x. For us to remove this root, we'll take the square of both sides. If we take the square of both sides, this will be 10 root 2 square equals root 2x square so that this will be give us 10 square is 100 and root 2 square is 2 because this 2 we cancel root 2 and so 100 times 2 is 200 equals 2x this will cancel this just the way this cancel this when you are evaluating this so divide both sides by 2 so x will be 100. 18 says if 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8s? 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. How do we interpret this? If my age is 10 more than your age, it means for you to get my age, you have to add 10 to your age. So 16 plus 4s is 10 more than 14 means 16 plus 4x is 14 plus 10. And so we are looking for 8s. This is 24. 16 plus 4s equals 24. And subtract 16 from both sides. 4x equals 24 minus 16. 4x equals 24 minus 16 is 8. So 8s will now be, if I multiply both sides by 2, 
I'll have 8s will be 16. 8s is 16. 19 says, if y is ks, this is what we call direct proportion. Where k is a constant and y is 24 when s is 6. Now, let's use this to find k. If y is 24, we'll have 24 equals 6k. Divide both sides by 6. We find that k is 4. And so the source will find the value of y when s is 5. So we we'll substitute the value of k for x is 5 times 5. And so this will be 20. Here is 16c and here is 20c. For what value of n is n minus 1 absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equals to 0 so we are asked that for what value of n is absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equals 0 which means absolute value of n minus 1 equals minus 1 but wait when you take the absolute value of a number whether positive or negative you should not have a negative number. So this is not possible. The absolute value of a number is not negative. So therefore, the answer is D. There is no such value of N. There is no such value of N. Question 21 says, which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with center 0, 0,4 and a radius with the end point 4 over 3,5. We know that equation of a circle is given by the formula x minus h r square plus y minus k r square equals r square, where h and k are the centers and arrow is the radius so for us to get the radius we'll take the distance from the center to the radius and we'll use the distance formula distance formula which says square root of s2 minus x1 all square plus x y2 minus y1 all square so if we do that here if this is s2 y2 this is x1 y1 to subtract x2 minus y1 will now be square root of 4 over 3 minus 0 is 4 over 3 square plus 5 minus 4 is 1 square and 4 over 3 square is square root of 16 over 9 plus 1 which is square root of 9 times 1 is 9 plus 16 is 25 over 9 and this is 5 over 3. So, we have gotten the distance. The distance is what the radius is. The distance is 5 over 3. That means, for us to represent this now in this equation, we we'll have x minus our h is 0, 0, which is s square, plus y minus our k is 4, because our radius is 5 over 3 square and if we square this which is 25 over 9 so the correct option is a 22 says the equation below expresses the approximate height in meters of a ball t seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second after approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground this is the function that represents the height of the ball for us to find the time for which the ball will approximately hit the ground we will equate this function of the height to zero and then find t so if we do that we'll have minus 4.9 t square plus 25t equals 0. t is common. I can factorize it out. Minus 4.9t plus 25 
equals 0. So this 2 is equal to 0 if t is equal to 0 or minus 4.9t plus 25 is equal to 0. And if this is equal to 0, if I take this to the right hand side, or I take this, I'll have 4.9 equals t equals 25. Divide both sides by 4.9. I will have that t is 5.10, so approximately 5.0. So this is the time for which the ball will approximately hit the ground, 5.10. So the third says, find what value of x is this function undefined. So we are going to equate the denominator to 0 and find the value of x for which the denominator is equal to 0. So x minus 5 is common, I can factorize, I have x minus 5, and what is many here is x minus 5, and what is many here is plus 4, plus 4, and this will give me x minus 5, minus 5 plus 4 is minus 1, this x minus 1 plus 4, sorry, equal to 0, equal to 0, so I can open the brackets, I will have x squared, minus x minus 5x plus 5 plus 4 equals 0. If I bring it together, I'll have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. This is obviously repeated root. Two numbers you can multiply to get 9, and when you add it, you get minus 6 will be min minus 3 and minus 3, because minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9, and minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6x. So this is x minus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x is 3. If s is 3, this denominator will be 0, and then it will make this undefined. Question 24 says, if a over b is 2, what is the value of 4b over a? If a over b is 2, it means b over a will be 1 over 2, just taking the inverse of both sides. If I multiply 4 to both sides, I will have 4b over a equals 4 over 2. So 4b over a will be equal to 2. So the answer is C. For i equals square root of minus 1, just giving you what this i stands for. What is the sum? This is complex numbers summing complex numbers you know when we sum complex numbers we add the corresponding component together so we add the s component which are 7 and minus 8 and the y component is 3 and 9 so 7 plus 3i plus minus 8 plus 9i so 7 plus minus 8 7 minus 8 is minus 1 and 3 plus 9 is plus 12i. So it's minus 1 plus 12i, which is a.